In this lesson, we will be solving real-world applications using nonlinear equations. Let's look at an example. During a professional football game, a kicker punts the football, and its path can be modeled by the function h of d equals a negative 0.0758 d squared plus 4.4917 d plus 3.5 where h is the height of the ball in feet and d is the horizontal distance it travels in yards. If the ball is not caught, how far will it have traveled when it hits the ground? So since we are looking at when the ball hits the ground, that means that h is equal to zero. So if we put zero in for h, we have zero equals a negative 0.0758 uh, d squared plus 4.4917 d plus 3.5. Now to solve for d, this is a quadratic equation, so we could try factoring, which really isn't going to work very well. We could try completing the square, which isn't going to, again, will not work very well. Uh, we could try the quadratic formula, and that would work. Uh, but for us, we're just going to go ahead and look at how we can solve this by graphing. So using our calculator, we need to enter the formula, just the right part of the formula, into our calculator. And go to the y equals screen. So once we have the right side of the equation typed in, we need to graph it. And in order to graph it, we need to set up the window. For the window, we know the x's represent the distance that the ball has traveled. Now, zero represents where the kicker is standing, and most punts uh, probably aren't going to go over maybe 70 yards, so let's just say zero to 70. Now, to actually change the y, we could play around with that, or we can just do zoom fit, so zero. So if we look at our graph, we have the punter standing here, and he kicks the ball, and the ball goes up, and it hits a maximum, and it comes back down. Now, technically, everything below the x-axis means that the ball's below ground, which is never going to happen. But it's good to at least see where does it hit the x-axis, and that's what we're looking for in this case. Where does it hit the x-axis? Now, to actually compute this, we can go into the trace calc menu, so second and trace takes us into the calc menu and we want to know when is the function equal to zero well we already have a pre-built feature to do that number two here will find the zero now similar to doing maximums and minimums it asks for a left bound and a right bound so we need to move our cursor so it's just to the left of where the zero is at so maybe right there will be fine press enter and now we need to move the cursor so it's to the right of where the zero is. So this is to the right, but it's also below. But the main thing is we want it to be to the right. Press Enter. And again, it asks for a guess. And all we need to do is hit Enter, since our guess is already at the end point. And if you ever see this, this if you ever see a capital E followed by a large negative number, the calculator is just telling you that this is zero. So it's at a height of zero feet when it has traveled 60.03 yards. Now let's look at a second part. How far has the football traveled when it is a at a height of 45 feet? Now this is similar to the first one, but instead of zero, we know the height is now 45 feet but we still get an equation. So 45 equals a negative 0 0.0758 d squared plus 4.4917 d plus 3.5. Now to do this time, we actually could do the zero command if we did a little bit of algebra here but it's actually just easier we're gonna graph 
the function is y1, because I already actually have that, and I'm going to graph the left side of my equation as y2. So let's go back to the y equals screen, and I already have the formula, my function typed into y1, so let's go down to y2 and enter 45. And I don't need to change the window or anything, everything should be set up for me. So I can just hit the graph button. So if you look at our graph, again the punter kicks it, and here, right here, is where it intersects uh, the graph of the 45. So this is the point where the ball is at 45 feet high. And it continues going up, and then it's going to hit its maximum and come back down. And on its way down, it will also pass through 45 feet high. So we actually have two places where the ball is at a height of 45 feet, and we need to find both of them. To do that, again, we can go into our Calc menu, which is Second and Trace. And this time, instead of doing zero, we're going to do number five, which finds the intersection. Now, intersection works a little differently. It's going to ask, instead of a left bound and a right bound, it's going to ask for a first curve and a second curve. Since I only have y1 and y2, I already have the first curve and second curve, so just hit enter twice. And the third thing it asks for is the guess. Now this is important when we're doing the intersection. Since I have two intersections, the guess is how I determine which one I want. So if I want this first intersection over on the left side, I need to move my cursor closer to that left side. So let's use the arrow keys. Let's move the cursor until it's over here on the left side. It doesn't have to be right next to the intersection, but it needs to be closer to it than to the other intersection. So once you get your guess over there, hit enter. And it should tell us that our intersection occurs if after the ball has traveled 11.45 yards. Now see if you can find the second intersection. Again, we go into the calc menu. We select number 5 to do the intersection. We enter the first curve and the second curve, so just hit enter twice. This time for the guess, I want it to be closer to the right one, so I'm going to have to use the arrow keys, or you could type in the number, and we'll move it over here. And I'll press enter to use the guess. So this time, the ball will be 45 feet high after it has traveled 47.8 yards. 